Bible says about medical cure? Is it biblical for a Christian to go to the hospital? Is it biblical for a Christian to take drug? Is it biblical for a Christian to open up for blood transfusion? Is it biblical for a, a, a Christian to open up for surgery? We will answer these questions today. Amen. You know, these are important questions that people are not talking about. But a lot of people are backsliding because of these things. So let's look at Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Let's stand up to read together. This is our first Bible reading uh, now that I want to preach. And I want us to read it with all our heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it possible that we turn on the lights? Is it possible? Is it possible those of you are the power sector? Are you, are we safe? Is it possible? Okay, turn on the lights, please. Turn it on. We are on one gen. But don't worry, before next week Sunday, the problem will be solved. The only thing is that we can't own fans now. And God, had seen, God has seen it, so that's why he gave us good weather. When my son was asking me this morning, Daddy, I want to pray that God should stop the rain. I said, no, don't pray. Some people need the rain this morning. He said, but don't, uh, we did not go to church. It means that those people that want the rain will not go to church. I said, no. Hey, Daddy, we, I said, Uriola, leave the rain. <laughs> Let it fall. But God will know how to do it. Okay, let's do it together now. After the count of three. Please follow this teaching. And I want you to catch understanding. If you don't understand, I will allow you in this service to raise your hand like this and say, sir, I have a question. Do you, do you get me? You are free to ask me a question. Now, let's read one, two, three, and let's go. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. Now, look up. Do you know what we lack in the body of Christ now? We lack teaching priests. Now, pastors that will teach us and show us pattern. Now, and if you look at what is happening on the internet, they are teaching so that everybody will, ah, no, 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 I don't need pastors. I don't need anybody. I want to be on my own. The apostles gave them a pattern to follow. Now, what's the pattern they gave them? They gave them biblical patterns. I've talked to you about the pattern for marriage. One man, one wife. And it's not man, man. It is male and female. Not get, get. No matter what the government say, I won't, I won't join boy boy on this on our altar like like even if nigerian government accept i will decide not to join anybody again praise the lord are you getting what i'm saying it's not biblical i've taught you here before that it is not biblical not to work the bible says he that does not work let him not eat it is wrong for a christian to be begging for money i've taught you here i taught you so many of these doctrines so today, let's look at what the Bible says about medical cure. So I don't want you to be confused. So let's be seated now. I'm the apostle that God has placed here and I'm giving you the doctrine when it comes to our health. Today we shall be looking at, like I said on my notes, at a very important question, a very important question that has to do with our health. Since we are told in scriptures but the, that by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. That is in 1 Peter 2.24. Let's look at that one too. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20. I'll try to be slow so that everybody can catch it. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24. You know, I know so many of you must have heard Igbagbola is so good. Have you heard it before? That is faith without the use of drugs. Now, look at this. The Bible says who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. He took his, our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sin, should live by, sorry, live unto righteousness. Now, you now stop there and say, by whose stripes? Now, nipa in apa tokba nibi inoe. Ye were what? Healed. Now, look at that scripture. He didn't say you shall be healed. He said you were healed. It means that you've been healed already. 
Now, and people are asking, Pastor, if we've been healed already, the Bible says by his stripes. It didn't say by the stripes you shall be healed. You know why I had to bring this ones out? I quickly made a research when I was on, in the office right now on my phone. You know, I made a research on founders, Apostle Ayodili Babalola of CAC, died at the age of 55. Uh, uh, Archbishop Benson Idaosa died at the age of 60. Uh, Apostle Moses Ulimoladi died at the age of 54. Apostle Timothy Obadari died at the age of 73. Apostle Oshofa died at 76. I was still studying that of Oshokoya, the founder of um, Apostolic Faith, before I came in. I've not gotten that one. Now, most of these faith fathers died young. Is it the will of God? For great apostles that rose the dead to die at the age of 55? Is it the will of God for great Archbishop Benson that also that was going from house to house to raise dead to die of cardiac arrest at the age of 60? So if Jesus actually paid, which the Bible cannot lie, our healing has been paid for. We are supposed to enjoy divine, divine health. Now, but what is the contention? I wrote here, why then are some believers sick? Why do so many believers even die of sickness? Why? Some people are asking, that's a, why are they dying of sickness? Why? Somebody, somebody said, my mother believed, like my own mother of blessed memory, you know, she died at the age of 65, you know, and uh, she battled with cancer till she died. Yours, what, your dad, 49, was an elder in a gospel faith mission, died at the age of 49. Let's answer these questions so that so many of you will not be feeling that like God is a wicked God. God doesn't answer prayer. God doesn't do this. God doesn't do that. Now, listen, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. What does the Bible say about medical cure? These are important questions in the hearts of several believers that nobody seems to answer. But let's start by defining man. Who is man? Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Let's start by defining who man is. I want you to understand it clearly now. Who is man? Who is man? Man is a spirit. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. As I mentioned, he'll be giving me scriptures. We have a lot of things to do today. You know, thou madest him. No, Genesis, not Hebrew now. Genesis 2 7. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Now, and the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground. Hello, look up. Come, brother Femi. Now, the Lord God formed the man. There is a part of man that is earthly. There is a part of you that will not go to heaven. If the trumpet should sound, that part of you will fall back to the ground and the real you will come out. That's why we say man is a spirit. Now, leave that scripture. I'm still reading it. Now, look, at, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. This one you see is from the ground. Formed by God from the dust. This one, the one that every one of us can see. Even me that you are seeing. Now, the real me, look at it, of the ground. And breath into the, his nostril. Ah, the breath of life. And man became what? A living soul. Man is a spirit. He has a soul, but for him to be physical on earth, he lives inside this body. Now, this body of man that you see, you can shake hands with, you can speak language, you know, is here on earth. This one is not going anywhere. This one needs not only spiritual law to survive here, he needs the atmosphere here. It was taken from here, it will be sustained from here. Hello? It will return to here. Now, and that's one thing so many Christians don't know. We feed our spirit man, hear me, we grow spiritually at the detriment of our body, physical body. Now, I wrote, don't go yet, I wrote something down here. Listen, defining man, man is a spirit. He has a soul and lives in a physical body. Jesus paid for man to enjoy divine health, never to be sick, or carry a disease? Question number one that we are going to, I'm bringing those questions. Why is it not happening like that for many Christians today? Or can I say, why are believers sick? The simple answer is this ignorance to health 
principles is the first answer. Now, why are men sick? Ignorance to health principles. You know, this one I told you was taken from here. Everything that will maintain this one is from where? It's from here. That's why if you don't eat, they will tell you, doctors will tell you, if you don't eat for 30 days, you can still live. But if you don't drink water for four days, you will die. They say man can go without food for 30 days. But man cannot survive without water for four days. All the internal organs will pack up. Hello. Talk to me now. What do I call the first one? Ignorance. Ignorance to what? Health principles. Some of you don't know that there are certain things about your body you need to know. I wrote some stories down here. I wrote four. Sit down. I'll call you later. I wrote four stories down. One of my pastor friends, a good friend of mine, he had a ministry along this road. Was doing very well. If you attend this prayer meeting, there was, there was usually crowd in the morning. When I heard of his death, I was touched. Why did he die? He was fasting. 150 days fast. It was along the line while he was fasting. And if you ask a pastor, what are we fasting for? Power. He was fasting for power. He was Ki won de pada de kan ya praise the Lord adura pastor man o ma je ah God did wonder so pastor spoke it like that and it happened pastor touched me and it happened you know you know he was in the process of fasting when his liver packed up he started shouting my head my head ori fi for and when liver packs up that's one of the symptoms uncontrollable unstopped kind of headache they rushed him to UCH but it was too late that man of God packed up was it time for him to go no he was ignorant. He didn't know that his body requires management. Hello? You are not talking to me. Now, I'm showing you where sickness comes from. The sicknesses don't come from the devil. You know what the devil does? The devil only hijacks, capitalizes on our mismanagement to operate. Another story I wrote down, one of my pastor friends, he, anytime he wants to preach, you will think there is no microphone in his hand. He has a mic, amplified, he will still be shouting, Ah, you don't know anything today. Da, da. You know, he was busy shouting, God saved him. His wife noticed, what is happening to my husband? The wife quickly went there, you started to rush him to the, to the, to the office, collected the mic, told somebody to summarize the service, and the man he was just, was just like this. He said, on the AC. They say, AC is on. Ah. Face me with the fan. His heart was failing. It was when they called me. I called a doctor that I know. Please, there's a problem with so so and so person. Then the doctor went to him. Do you know his own case is that? He was on treatment. But it was on that dose they were giving him. His heart will have packed up and somebody will have sung, he has finished his assignment. God didn't bring you to the earth to finish your assignment halfway. Let me tell your neighbor, may you not die young. Mm -mm, say it with a lord of prophecy. I went to visit another man of God, a senior minister. I sat beside him like this. He was putting on pampas. His kidney had packed up. They said they do dialysis eh, once in a week because there was no money to do it frequently. As we were talking, you know, I was just looking at him. Ah, guy, he, if you, he had lost weight, lost, lost almost everything. Then he died. Now, I was wondering, Lord, what is happening? It was when I was discussing with his wife. The wife told us that he has what we call an uncontrollable appetite. For cow meat. Ah, he, he will load meat that you will not even see the food under the meat. And he had uncontrollable appetite for five alive. Juice. 
he was always taking sugar and consuming meat. And you know, if diabetes is not managed properly, that's what it will result to. The man of God died though. I was at his burial service. As they were pushing him inside the, the grave, I was there. I witnessed everything. And the questions he continued in my heart, Lord, as he got into his time. Another one too is a bishop. He started a church at a particular age of his life. And the stress of, you know church, you know you members now. You know members, you know yourself. They followed him out of winners to go and start his ministry. After some time, the people began to return to their church. Began to return to their church. Began to return to their church. Then he got to a point he was buying fuel by himself. Yeah, a whole bishop had to go and buy fuel by himself. He went to the petrol station to buy fuel. That was where he had attack with stroke. Now, what am I saying? Understand that your physical body has certain laws that you must live by. That you are born again does not mean that you should not live by those laws. See, I hear Now, go and try it, what I'm saying. If you are born again, you say, I will not drink water for four, four days and I will not die. Go and try it and see if you will not die. Then come back and tell me if you are still alive. There are laws. You see Christians abusing their body. Imagine they were announced program on television. And you see crowd, 72 hours prayer meeting with God. How many days is that? How many days? Three days. Non-stop. It is not one pastor that is preaching, but it is one members, the same members that are praying. Maybe pastors will take one one hour, one pastor one hour, Uti Lonte, Uti Lonte, and that pastor one hour, Uti Lonte, and that pastor. But it is one member that is praying for 72 hours, three days without sleep. Is God that wicked? Ah, ah, go read your Bible now. Adua Meloni Hana. Touch your neighbor, say for me, say neighbor. Manage your body well. You can do it again. Shout it aloud, neighbor. Manage your body well. Now, apart from ignorance to health principles, there's another one I put here neglect. A lot of Christians neglect, they don't pay attention to their health. The human body has in indicators. Emma Gomisa, you know what they call indicators? They have symptoms. Medicals, we call it symptoms to make you know that something is wrong. But most times we don't pay attention. If you don't sleep as you're supposed to sleep, your body will tell you. If you don't eat as you're supposed to eat, your body. In fact, if you have too much of what you are eating, your body will tell you. There are, there, are, there are symptoms, but most of you just like. Nothing will happen. You know, you have, you have faith even more than the pastor teaching you. I know some of you will still be saying, don't mind Pastor Prince, we ask backslide. Our oh, pastor, I know some of you like that. Am I down alone, Jerry? Hey, I'm telling you from practical experience. Some people don't observe rest. Some people don't eat well. Some people don't eat balanced food. Because, listen, there are certain ages when you get to, there are certain kind of food you just have to stop. They are good food, but for younger people. Because some of you say, nothing happened, nothing happened. I'm actually not have a good meal. Ah, Pastor, I think get uh, cooking. Me, if you cook, she I went for a program, I my wife, and we're going, I saw pastors sharing uh, energy drink. And I called them, I said, pastors, you are taking this thing. They say, Pastor, is it a sin? I say, it's not a sin. But what I'm trying to show you is that why not read the table of the content? Look at the composition. The things they put together. I brought it. I said, look at the bottle. Look at these things. Look at caffeine. It's too hard. Your heart doesn't need this. They say, ah, Pastor, I'm but I'm born again. You don't get what I'm saying. You don't take things because everybody is taking it. You take things because of your health. I told her, I said, see, I have never tasted it in my life. And I, the reason is because the first time somebody gave me, I picked it up, I looked at it, I went to it, I Google some of the things that they used to come, come you know, to do it. Come, uh, how do you call it? Uh, 
the ingredients and I saw that this thing is injurious to my heart and I want to live long. I wrote here, can I say this? That the devil capitalizes on the way we misuse our body to attack us with sickness. The devil capitalizes on the way we misuse our body to attack us with sickness. I come again. The devil capitalizes on the way we misuse our body. Aman shiarawalu. Some of you, because of pursuit of money, ah, ah, say, Mugodo Miko, Mugodo Miko, Mugodo, you, 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 you put your body aside. Go and find out. Most people that put their body aside in pursuit of money are now using the same money to take care of their health. I wrote here. I'm, I've not answered your question. We are still going deeper. I wrote here my, I call it my story, my dream, and my cure. Say it after me, my story. My story. Say my dream. My kill. Now, what is my story? Many years ago, I finished a 40 days fast. And as I was running up the 40 days fast, I was challenged that, ah, I will do another 40 days. I've not finished the 40 days. So, the day I was supposed to finish, I said, no, I want to do another 40 days. I want to do, an so I switched into another 40 days. When I got to 20 days, I was getting to 60 days of fasting. I just noticed that I started having joint pains, serious pains in all my joints. So, in the night, uh, I went to Wii, and I saw that my Wii was like moth, completely black. I called my mom. She came around. She said I should win to the container. I senior pastor. I went to the, ah, my mom said, what is going on? Before you know it, the all of my eyes became yellow, completely yellow. Ah. What is going on? I didn't know it was hepatitis that was coming. But thank God, while I was there sick, I couldn't stand. The whole of my joints were paining me. I got a dream because I was asking the Lord, Lord, is it time? Lord, is it time? Lord, is it time? Because I've never been that sick in my life. And I saw myself in my dream. Listen, in that dream, I saw that some people called me for housewarming. I went there. While I was blessing the house, somebody was calling me for child dedication. I was saying, okay, I'm coming. As I was going there, somebody called me that they gave back to a child. I said, I'm coming. I was about going. And now I'm coming that they have bought a car. They want to dedicate. I said, I'm coming. And now I'm coming that they have brought you. My phone was just ringing and I had an audible voice. When will you not die young? I said, Lord, what have I done? He said, with the way you abuse and misuse your body, son, you will die young. I said, Lord, is this the cause of my sickness? He said, yes. You have abused your body. You have despised the law of rest. You have despised the law of food. He started telling me so many things. I woke up. As I woke up, one of our members, Dr. Molly, ah, may God bless that doctor, came to visit me because he came from oh, is it Ado or Ondo State? I can't remember that time to visit his brother. He came for uh, a special training in Ibadan. He now said, ah, Pastor Wa Tonti Eni Ure Wandi Kingwawu Wandi. As he came, my mother told him the color of my urine. Ah, he said, ah, ah, ah. Okay, you know what? We can't wait for the test. If I say you should go and do tests now. Okay, we'll take his blood sample for test. But if we wait for the result, something may go wrong before results come out. You know what? I will start treating pastor now. Now, you know I said my, my story, my dream, my cure. This doctor treated me with some powerful drugs. And in one week, I was feeling better. They said the other one week, I'll be taking glucose water to change the water system of my body. And after two weeks, I was okay. When I came out of that experience, I learned a lesson. You are a spirit. You have a soul, but you live in your body. Hello? Do you have a car? If you have a car, answer me. Do you have a car? Who drinks fuel? Who buys it? Uh, you, do, do you understand what I'm saying? 
the food of the car is fuel, not you. If you don't give it fuel, it cannot carry you to where you are going. The food of your body is plenty. If you don't give your body food, the you that came for assignment is not this body. If you don't give it enough rest, if you don't give it proper meal, you see that you'll not be able to, to, to carry out your assignment again. So what am I saying? The devil is not the one behind sickness. He only capitalize on our ignorance. Praise the Lord. So I've answered question number one. Jesus has paid for our healing, but because of our abuse, misuse of our body, we abuse grace. And you know what? John chapter, look at it. John chapter 6 verse 12 shows us that God hates waste. He has paid for your healing, but you are wasting it. John chapter 6 verse 12. Let's look at it. John 6 12. You know what that John 6 12? There was multiplication of food. It came by miracle. You don't know you can't waste now. Have you? But look at Jesus. He said when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, do what? Gather the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Which means God hates waste. Next question. What does the Bible say about medical cure? Let's now go to it now. Is it wrong for me to go to the hospital? Is it wrong for me to allow doctors to attend to me? Luke chapter 5 and verse 31. Luke chapter 5 and verse 31. Let's read together. After the count of three, everybody we must read together. One, two, and three. Let's go. And Jesus answering said unto them, They, are whole, they that are whole need not a physician. But they that are, who says so? Cherry in the Bible tell me. If you let you worry, if you go like this, I get to feel NLT car, NLT car. Today we come out there, we are more spiritual. Do we mean going in law? Oh yeah. NLT. Ah, and you take one bed. That alone could see time. I need to treat in one. You don't have NLT? Okay, thank you. One, two, three. Let's go again. Jesus answered them. Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Who said so? Who needs doctor? Which means if you are sick, you need a doctor. A lot of people that are dying on the altar are not supposed to die on the altar. A child is sick. You say, Take, go and put that child on the altar. And you are not doing anything. And if that child dies, you say, Jesus, you disappoint me. Sister Busayo, are you here? You yourself know that you are sick. You say, I know if I go, I'll go, I'll go to the altar. Now, I wrote this down. Beloved, medical cure is one of the provisions of God for the healing of man's body. It is him that gives man wisdom. Some of you don't know that this uh, scientific, scientific wisdom that people have is not given by the devil. As I'm talking to you now, scientists are still working hard to see whether, they, whether people can live in other planets. Abby, they are still working. God has not shown them. If they succeed, you see that people will begin to go holiday in mass. Jupiter. Oh yeah, students. Gluten, eh? I'm looking at you Eh? Adi, eti yonon gugu eko, eh mo. Shaking pe inle yoko ko. Awa no man lo joye en skung ba eh. Then we say hi, 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 hi. We don't know because we know that if you say hi, the teacher will not call you. 
The day our master come, that man beat me. Here. Ah, God. Mr. Folabi is his name. So what am I saying? They are still walking. God is the one that gives them the wisdom. I was looking at the internet. You know, of recent now, they have discovered that you can be pregnant without womb. They have discovered it now. Artificial womb. They will just collect the semen from the man, collect the egg from the woman, take it to the lab, grow it. They have artificial womb now. Glass. I saw it on internet. In fact, they now say they can even when they plant it there, the child is growing. The parents can carry the whole glass home so that the, the parent, the child will live with them, get familiar with them. <laughs> because you know, Igbo people, they will say, I don't want to go through the stress of pregnancy. I don't want to lose my flat tummy. I don't want to lose my flat tummy. I don't want, uh, and you see the Daniel husband too will be saying, I don't, I don't want my wife to lose a flat tummy, please. Can you please? <laughs> ah. You know, in Nigeria, if you get married after three years, no child, your mother will be gone. But abroad, they will discuss before they get married. I don't want to have a child. Will you marry me? I say, I see your love, not a child. That's not going to be. <laughs> Africa, man. Kiwali. <laughs> Mind it in one year to city. When I saw it, of recent too, they made somebody had kidney uh, uh, issue. They used the kidney of a pig. Okay, you watched it too. Okay, the man has died. Oh God. They, they, and you see, they will still be making research. Daniel chapter 2, verse 47 shows us something about God. Let's read it. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 47. Look at it. The king said to Daniel, truly, your God is the greatest of gods. The Lord, our king, a revealer of mysteries. So, medical cure is God's provision. When you see here now. Don't see it as a sin. And when we talk about medical uh, medical cure, I want to go a little bit deeper. He gave man brains and made him discover several means that brings cure. You know, the medicals we used one of their cure, drugs. It is somebody that discovered that, okay, we can combine these things together into capsule, into tablet. At times, some it is not drugs. Do you know that some people, it is therapy, to some it is counseling, to some it is surgery. And look at the kind of sophisticated machines that they are produced now. I told you that of Paul Alexandra, who lost his lungs at the age of five. And they discovered artificial lungs for him in a cylinder. He lived inside a cylinder for 70 years. Africa and I like in That's why I pass back the program too, but he If I do a work at the mess, son, I like the color of money. pastor and take mirror. Somebody was telling one of our members, yeah, I do a one goes power, could no. Let's understand that med- I'm not despising. Listen, there is divine healing. I will still get there. But I want you to begin to understand that medical cure is God's provision. I wrote here. Don't let anybody make you feel. Don't let anybody make you feel that following medical instructions is a sign that you lack faith. You know, there are people like that. Ah, your doctor said and you are following. Is your doctor God? God gave them understanding of the human body. In fact, I wrote down here, the human body is made up of organs. You know what organs? 
organizations in the body. We have the digestive tract. We have the respiratory tract organ. Reproductive organ. Several organs in the human body. Please. I don't want you to die young. Go. You will not die young. I didn't hear your amen. Ah. I wrote two examples here. Let me read those ones. Okay, let me just say them because of our time. The first one was my pastor friend. The wife got pregnant. They were expecting their first baby. They went registered at the Central Hospital. And on the day of delivery, the woman, on the day of labor, she tried, 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 tried. Baby did not come out. They anointed her stomach, anointed everywhere, did everything. Baby. You know, there are some things about this life we can't explain. The doctor kept saying the service did not open. So the doctor came to my friend. Uh, Sir, the safest thing we can do now is to operate on your wife and bring the baby out. He said, God never told me that. If God didn't operate on Adam, you can't have wife. The Bible says he put Adam to sleep. Open him up. Remove the rib by the side. The bone by the side. The man said, no, God never told me that. The doctor said, okay, no problem. They continued trying. Then they went to check. Vital signs have stopped. The baby had died in the womb. Now that the baby has died in the womb, the only means of bringing the baby out is operation. They now quickly went to gather money so that the wife would not die. They now operated the woman to bring out a dead baby. What's that? Ignorance. Another one is a pastor, he's a bishop. He was sent to go collect money in the bank, salary of staffs. As he collected the money, armed robbers followed him. He got to a bakery to buy something, they shot him three times in the heart. Pa, pa, pa. He fell down. As people were gathering, he was shouting, Take me to my spiritual home. Take me to my spiritual home. Take me to my spiritual home. Take me to my ah, all right, spiritual home, Lance or any. So the people rushed him to church. But well, thank God, his spiritual home pastor is my mentor. As he had, he has started calling them in usage. Ambulance were ready. As they brought him to spiritual home, he noticed that it, you, don't, you don't need spiritual home. You need medical home. They rushed him to usage. The miracle there is that when they opened the heart, they discovered that the bullet entered but did not touch the bone. Nothing was broken. The Buddha just entered and went like this. Entered and went like this. The man is still alive. But thank God that he was under a man of God that had wisdom. Because some of you, we give you instruction. You see no. And he said no. We told one of our daughters here too like that. She was pregnant. We registered that in an hospital. But you know, this way, uh, this way, I believe in mission. I believe I'm not going against it. But I always tell people the reason why I don't like mission house is that if anything turns around, they will still refer you to the hospital. Why not go to where they will eventually refer you to? Be going there to pray when it's time to, be de- to deliver, go to the hospital. She lost her baby in that, in that mission. They now rushed her to an hospital to operate her to bring the baby out. Quickly, last question, or two more questions. Does it mean that God no longer heals divinely? The answer is no. Does it mean that God no longer heals divinely? No. God is a sovereign God. You know why we call him a sovereign God? He chooses the way he wants to act. And I put it this way. While you pray for divine healing, let doctors attend to you too. Do the needful. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do not refuse the medical help that God made available for your healing. Don't refuse it. I will round up with a story very soon. We invited the pastor to come and preach in our church many years ago. And that was the last time I invited him. This pastor came on the altar and was telling us, this is 
40 years that I've not tasted pasta more. 40 years. No tablet has touched my mouth. This man you see standing up in front of you has never been to the hospital in the past 40 years. After that service, my mother that was hypertensive went to throw her drug away. It was a two-day ministration. for me already. So the second day, I allow him to finish and I sat down with him. Pastor, if you don't take all these things, what do you do? Ah, he said, Pastor Prince, wait. I don't eat sugar. Pastor Prince, wait. I observe the sleep thing. Every 4 p.m., I sleep for two hours or three before I sleep in the night. I went to a seminar at the redemption camp. They taught us the equivalent of all these drugs, the food equivalent. That, for instance, he told me, for instance, a wedu is folic acid. If my body needs folic acid, I eat a wedu. For instance, pastor, he was started mentioning all these things he was eating. I said, but sir, you didn't tell my people all these ones. They all will have gone to throw away their drug. Not knowing that, he said, I have not tasted cake. So, so, and so, yes. Mm. I don't drink mineral. I don't. He was just telling me so many things. Ah! I had to look for a way. Some of you didn't know, and you are hearing for the first time. I had to look for a way to now start doing counter teaching. If you don't understand a person's formula, don't follow his method. You know why I'm teaching you all these things? Because we are leaders. I see that you follow us. When my wife cut her hair, all our sisters started cutting their hair. I've seen that. So it made, I told my wife, I said, we are leaders. It shows that we are influencing them. Don't do weight loss if you don't ask mama what she's doing. Let me be sincere. You know, you see her, she's now slim. Ask her. Don't just go and stop eating. <laughs> it's not fasting she's doing ask her I used to fall sick before I stopped falling sick because I understand that I was overworking my body and last year I struck this year I got it right last year was the only year first year in several years that I didn't fall sick because I went to sit down with my mentor and my mentor taught me how they used to live their life. Kishikwe could seek divine healing, abuse, lolon fair. We took food uh, during my mother's burial. Remember, I took uh, the things that food to my mentor, and my mentor saw me the next day. He said, Ah, Pastor Prince, you brought it. I said, Yes, sir. You brought it around so so and so time. I said, okay. See, I can't eat it anymore. It was then, it was from them I learned how to close, when to close my mouth. Because me, <laughs> Any food you eat after six can never digest again. So I'll leave that one for another time. What am I saying? Take care of your body. It was this encounter I had with this minister that made me to understand that, see, we have to teach you. So listen, it's not that divine healing is not available. It's available. But you know one thing with God is this. When God makes provision for something, he doesn't want you to trouble him over it again. 
he has made medical provision available. You know, there are some things that medicals will tell you they don't have power anymore. Then God will step in. Yeah, I I want to understand them all. There are cases like that. When doctors say, ah, uh, ma, uh, sir, we just have to refer. They will refer. That one too, we collect money small. We just have to refer. That one too, we collect money small. We just have to refer. Until if you get to a truthful doctor that will say, ah, the way things are, I must be sincere. We just need God. That's why I say, while you are, doctors are attending to you, be praying for yourself. But the greatest of all is this. You can even avoid going to the doctor if you live well. There is nothing that says as a Christian, look up, I'm rounding up. There's nothing that says, there are informations. To Monday, I want to study about my kidney this week. Go online. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can say, this week I want to study my kidneys. Next week I want to study my liver. Other week I want to study my brain. Another week, healthy food. Next one, I want to study my digestive tract. Another one again, I want to study. <laughs> oh, yes, love. <laughing>. Yes. <laughs> you know, all these things limit. We st- you study. You understand. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to be funny. I'm going to be jelly flocks, Ray. Okay. Okay. Simba Mo. I'm going to be I'm going to be fast. I'm going to Okay. You know, when you have this knowledge, knowledge is power. How many amount of exercise do I need? Does my body need? These are things you find out. Then you now come out, not an as an illiterate now, as a knowledgeable person that knows how to man. Don't forget, I told you that your physical body lives on certain laws. If our fathers in faith had access to this truth, they won't die when they died. They told us, I was reading the story of how the late Archbishop Benson in the house had died. He said he finished ministering somewhere. Some people came to see him. He attended to them. He prayed for some people. He was now escorting some of the people that came. This man doesn't used to rest. As he was going out, it did, yeah. He fell down. They rushed him to, it was his heart. Guys, up on your feet. Let's close. Have I answered your question? I've been on being. I've been telling you, but you also don't know. Let's go and watch. Rise up now. Ask my family, they know me. When I sleep, I sleep. Sematic be really bad by I'm alone on learning here. You shall my woman alone on learning here. My wife is a king of the man, but I like being here. Kim Bokman had it. Moman switch off. Sematic swim with the switch off. If I want to pray too, Tibaba is need prayer. I pray. If I want to fast, I just finish one month fasting. I finish my fast on Friday. The whole of May, I use it to fast. But you know. But because I'm not, I've eaten donuts this morning now. I take my life as it goes. Go and begin to research these laws. Hear me? To manage your body. Do you understand? My doctor friend told me one day, he said, Pastor Prince, he said, Ah, man, study, I laugh. He said, I learned that from experience. 
How many services will you now minister before you die? And you say you want to go a long way. May God grant you access to the wisdom needed to manage your health. Listen, the wisdom is available in several places. Go and search for it. There are so many people that come to see me for counseling. So I pray for me. When they tell me their case, I also tell them, you don't need prayer. Go to the hospital. Yes, sir. I, want, I said, listen, I'm your pastor. Go to the hospital now. And God has used me to save many. I want to anoint you today. The first Sunday for the month of June. This month, I say again, you will gain access to the miracle that will change your level. I say again, miracles that what I call level changing kind of miracles, begin to gain access to them in Jesus name. As I anoint you today, it will happen for you. The angels that God have prepared will meet with you. You know there are angelic men, you will meet them. The victory you have been waiting, you have waited for will occur this month. Those of you that have been covered by the things that have made you forgotten by helpers, that evil covering is removed now. You will not lose the good things you have. I declare this month, the month that you will sing the victory song. You will dance the victory dance. And men will rejoice with you. So it is. In the name of Jesus. Father, I bless the oil. As I anoint your people today, let this prophet come to in their lives.